We've got Jay Sarau through video from the UK from the band Schmaltz on the show today as well as music. Yes, we've got music from Schmaltz. Of course, we've also got music that's going to cross genres. We've got rapper Octane through video on the show and we're also going to get to know singer-songwriter Rhett May. Towards the end of the show, we'll give you a preview of the upcoming interview with Blackout Lights. A few reasons? That's every reason to stick around. Schmaltz on SBS Live this week as we kick off year two. Welcome back. I'm your host, Jared SBS, and this is year two of SBS Live this week. As many of you already know, this video interview project, if I had to pick a favorite, this could very well be the one. Though I am digging those separated music videos that we've been posting lately from now until the end of the year. You've seen those, right? Those are awesome, and I'm happy that we're doing that. But these are definitely my favorite. And the reason why is simple because I'm not there. Creative control is completely handed over to whoever our victim, <clears throat> I mean guest, of the week is. And these video interviews come out completely unique every single time based on that fact alone. So we've seen it in the past through video interviews with Man Made Lake and Singed and the Danbury Lie. Everybody chooses to handle this differently and in a different style. And that style, in my opinion, is the honest one. What gets to come out on screen and what gets shown is whatever the band wants to do. So whatever they're putting out there is definitely an aspect of who they truly are. And how wicked is that? No tampering, no media person out there pulling the strings, just what the band wants. That brings us to Jay Sorrow of Schmaltz. Now no one pulls the strings better of their band than Jay does. Whether it's making the music, or providing the direction of the band, or even this video interview today, Jay's dedication shows in both his music and this interview, and no one pulls him in any direction that he doesn't want to go. And I'm not there to pull the strings of schmaltz, not this time. So, again, what I expect out of these interviews is the genuine character of a band or an artist. And you're going to see that on screen with Jay here today. I like the honesty. I like the gut reaction. I like what I call the real. And Jay gives us plenty of the real here in our first episode of Year Two, and I'm extremely excited for you guys to hear what he has to say about his music. His dedication and his passion for what he does, how he makes his music, and how he goes about it, uh, it shows right here on screen you can see it in his eyes he has a different ear than most for music and I can appreciate how he goes about making this stuff and just the genuine care that he takes towards his craft he's a gifted songwriter and a great communicator I'm stoked to be able to spend these next two episodes with Jay and with Schmaltz with the music and with learning about what goes on behind it you will get the reel from Jay this I can promise you now with each and every one of these interviews that we send out, we basically pray and we hope that they come back to us. We sent out over 15 of these video interviews over the course of 2013 that did not get returned, have been sent out into the void, never to be answered, never to be seen on the show. 
uh, which is unfortunate. I've seen bands retire out of this project. I've seen them go away completely. Do not retire your band if you get one of these interviews. Simply answer the questions and send them back. But when they do come back every single time, it's a unique experience, something absolutely new for myself. I love to go further with the music and the artists that make it. So this style of interview really allows me to get to know different artists and bands in a truly unique way. Uh, we've got projects currently sent out to Swami Lushbeard in the United States. We've got them sent out to Lunar Sea in Italy. And we finally finished the video interview for Nicholas and the Iceni over in the UK. Stoked to be able to show you those later on in year two. They all sound promising, like they will come back finished. So very stoked to be able to show you those later on in year two. But we will focus on the present for now. I will wrap this up and let Jay do the talking. Let's find out what's going on with Schmaltz here on SBS Live this week. The Schmaltz, hailing from London. Jay, we've been lucky enough to talk to you a little bit over correspondence and written stuff. Uh, but for our fans and followers and people that haven't met you yet and what you do in the Schmaltz, uh, give us an intro to yourself, your band, anybody else that's there in the room, and just uh, let's get this thing rolling. Tell us about yourself. Who are you? Well, my name is Jay Sorrell. I'm from London, England. Been in a few bands, but in particular, Jay Sorrell and the Juice, aka Jay Sat Jay, or the Juice as we used to be known as. Um, we have supported some good acts. The old band has supported some good acts like uh, Idle Wild, for example, and also uh, independently, albeit on a smaller scale, toward the US, India, and the Middle East. Yes, they have. Uh, a music scene in the Middle East. Uh, in my music avatar, I am the founder and frontman for Schmaltz. I am a guitarist songwriter and I particularly enjoy acts like The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Sabbath, Cream, um, GNR, etc. Good old fashioned rock and roll. And I'd like Schmaltz to be influenced by these acts that I'm, I am personally influenced by. I say music avatar because, like many, I suppose these days, I do have a day job and I do this purely for the love of music. Schmaltz is a personal project where, apart from exploring my songwriting capabilities, I'd like to explore collaborating with similar artists or people to create something that I'd like to listen to once in a while. I'm always big on sharing my first impressions of how I met your band via the social media route. And uh, I gotta say, you know, I check out the Facebook page for the Schmaltz, and what do I find? I find that the core of the band is yourself, Jay, and that you're, you have what seems to be like a, a rotation of collaborations, which is phenomenal. That's wicked. I mean that, that idea that you're open to working with people from all over, doing all kinds of crazy things and probably making all kinds of crazy sounds. Uh, I think that's extremely kick-ass. But I guess what I want to know is, is there any advantage to having that steady rotation of collaboration versus being in a full-time band? Um, I guess the answer to that question is I get to play with the strengths of the various artists and songwriters I work with. And there's no limitations to hopefully the creativity that we both can bring in to each song that we work on. What I mean by playing with the strengths is, for example, The Grand Wizards. I think, in my opinion, it's a fantastic ballad. Mo's strengths on that song was his versatility with the instruments used. Uh, and the production value, of course. In the song's case, he's played the mandolins, he's played the guitars on the track, and obviously produced the, the cello, uh, the MIDI cello, for the, for the track as well. On the flip side, I will be releasing two tracks called Magic and Blow with my old mate Jack, 
Jack Evans, who I have a great working partnership with because of our time with the old band. And with Jack, I know he is technically sound with a critical approach to every song that we work on. So, so in a way, Schmaltz is limitless. And I also understand that I wouldn't be able to work with, say, 10 songwriters at a given point in time. I know my limits because I'm a human being and uh, at any point in time I would ideally like to work with two to three songwriters so we put in enough justice or we, we, we put in the love and care the song needs at any point in time that we work on it. F -B -F. See, that's what I'm talking about. Jay's a knowledgeable guy. I like listening to this guy talk about music. I could talk to this guy all day. One of these days, we'll get him here from the UK and sit him down here in the studio and have that face-to-face. -face. But right now, I want to show you a video. I want to show you a song called Point of View. And this is the unofficial video for... Unofficial video. Shit, can we play this? Cute and 
I've certainly talked to enough bands to know that one of the uh, most common things that they have to say is that their band can often be like a second home. Uh, that's a pretty cool concept when you think about it. To be able to describe something you love in that same light as something else you love just as much. Now that's pretty cool. But I gotta ask, because in a band where there's a one-man core and a group of collaborations, well, how do you... Does it feel like home? Can a one-man band feel like home? Or is this like a one-man band with the largest extended family that we've ever known? I got to be honest, I do miss the camaraderie associated with being in a band or when jamming in a studio, for example. And that's certainly missing the schmaltz because we never jam, we never meet up, for example. I haven't, I haven't, I've never met Matt Dean, the drummer, yet. I haven't met Graham Waller, the mixing engineer. I haven't met Tom Jarvis, a mastering engineer. And, and so many other people that I worked with. But there's something satisfying about Schmaltz in the sense that I'm now able to create something from scratch online and without being in the same room as another musician. Uh, and in a way, my online team is my second home because of the set of people I work with. So a short answer to your question would be, yes, I miss being in a room with a band and sharing banter, etc. But I guess I built an online team of people who kind of know what I like and don't like, so it kind of equates itself to it. What about collaborations outside of the genre? Yeah, I'm wondering about those. Because clearly the schmaltz is all about rock. They're all things rock, for sure. That's a given. But how outside the genre do you actually go, Jay? I'm wondering, because, I mean, I guess what I'm asking is, are you out there making the music that you like to listen to, or are you out there to make all kinds of music? You're open to all kinds of collaborations, but how is the music defined? Are there certain parameters about what you'll make and what you won't? Well, it depends, man. Um, if it's something that really interests me or I feel I can honestly and emotionally contribute to it, I'll work on that track and finish it with the songwriter I'm working with. But if I don't feel it, I won't touch it. And that way it doesn't waste my time or the potential collaborator's time as well. I love that sound. All right, let's switch it up a little bit here. We're known to do that, and it's year two, and we're never going to stop. So let's switch up the style a bit. Let's bring you a video from rapper Octane. Now, if you're a lady and you're looking for a rapper, you might just want to hear what Octane's got to say. Wait a minute. Now that I think about it. Well, you see, the thing is, ladies, if you don't meet his criteria, it can get a little bit complicated. This cut's called Turn Down by Octane on SBS Live this week. I be sound on the beat. Yeah. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You are turned down. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You are turned down. You are turned down. I'm the type. 
heart that belongs to the good girls But all I do is snag them bad girls I ain't a player but it's a cold world In any circumstance show is that yo girl Sitting at the table with a deck of cards Yelling out oh no we trying to live it large Almost famous friends saying that they know me Dealing with those that's acting like them groupies Just wanna be seen with a breadwinner Not call them gold diggers but we not broke broke So she envisioned a moment with me And all she really wants is the Money is only tricking if you don't even have her And I don't even have a soul, do you get the picture? And you try to diss me at a freaking concert It end up being the one that's really hurt You ain't turned up, girl, you are turned down You ain't turned up, girl, you are turned down You ain't turned up, girl, you are turned down You are turned down, you are turned down You ain't turned up, girl, you are turned down You ain't turned up, girl, you are turned down But she was my longest relationship Didn't trust me cause of my female friends I have enough girl, so no new friends Can't be with someone with no trust Dance for each other and that's a must I'm taking drastic measures to make you happy But really it's not working out for me Well I ended up having feelings for a friend But I'm too far in the zone to cause an end So you think all men cheat like what the f you blaming all us for all your bad luck? Reevaluate yourself once again and repeat the process before you get them in. As I sit back with that tons of laughter, the story's not over. Here's another chapter. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You are turned down. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You ain't turned up, girl. You are turned down. You ain't turned. We're promoting a new segment on the show that will be starting soon that we call The Standard. This is a brand new style of interview for us where, as per the title, The Standard Never Changes. Uh, the questions will always remain the same, however the bands answering the questions will hopefully change and the style and creativity and the way that those answers come out on screen will again be much like this video interview where creative control is completely up to them on what they want to put on screen. So while the questions of the standard will never change, the unique element of every band will be brought to life on screen through their answers, their ideas, and how they want to shoot their responses. I'm stoked to be able to see the difference in how all kinds of different bands and artists will choose to answer the questions on the standard. And for a look at how you can get involved, take a look at this promo. We do interviews all the time. What we're offering is for you to take part in a brand new segment on our internet show. It's called The Standard, and as such, it never changes. Over time, people taking this particular style of interview will grow. Bold answers will be attempted. Creativity will be inspired by comparison. You have creative control, but The Standard will never change. tell you a story about this uh, place that used to be by where 
I lived uh, with the studio partner of mine, Rob, uh, for the first time. And that was a store that was called Lab Top Computers. Not Laptop, but Lab Top. Now, the name itself was so confusing for the public that it actually ended up resulting in this company, Lab Top Computers, they, they put a little handwritten sign on the door that said, no, we do not carry laptop computers. I always thought that was a little bit strange compared to the idea that they could have just carried laptop computers to satisfy the demand that was obviously walking through the door. They were, in fact, a computer store still. A little bit strange. Anyway, what I want to know is, I've noticed that in your write-ups, uh, you're pronounced the schmaltz. Well, of course, the spelling of it looks a little bit different, and I've seen that you've had to bracket that out. Is that something that, I mean, I don't know, for myself, I'd be like, damn, I don't want to explain this every single time. People either get it or they don't. Um, I don't know. It might just be because it's still a relatively new project, but I guess I'm wondering, doesn't that get to you? Jay, my man, you could have gone with, like a completely easier route and just picked a name that people would have instantly known uh, what the, what it sounded like and, and what it was supposed to be. So, I guess, why go the difficult route? And because I'm a man of broad horizons, never mind just this one single example, why go the difficult route in life? What can be gained? I keep asking that question to myself every day, dude. I wanted to call my act Schmaltz, as in Bon Scott's ACDC lyric from Let There Be Rock, because he's one of my main inspirations. But I also liked, kind of like the Urban Dictionary word Schmaltz, as in S-H-M-O-L-T-S, which apparently is dry particles of spit or fo a foreign object to the side of your mouth or your eyes. And I thought that was that was kind of rock and roll. So I guess I wanted both, as in schmaltz, with the current spelling, but pronounced schmaltz, as in Bon Scott's lyric. Um, why the difficult route in my life? I presume you're, you're, referring, to, um, you're referring to the difficult route with, uh, with the construct of my band and the concept of schmaltz. And I suppose, I suppose there are many bands out there with with easier names to pronounce and I suppose it would be easier for me to to just have a band and and produce and and create the music that I create right now but everything about schmaltz is unconventional it's about challenging social norms and utilizing the uh, the advantages of the digital era that we live in and uh, with Schmaltz, I can widen the, widen the scope of what I can do as an independent artist. Uh, albeit it takes more time, but I can do it and as an independent artist. I gotta admit, I know that uh, one of the things that I offer on the site that you found us is to kind of help with the tone of the interview and uh, you know represent it in a well the idea is to represent it in a way that's going to reflect the tone of your band now you sent me a list that was so specific something I had never really seen before um, but interview uh, in the style of like Tool and Clutch and whatnot now I gotta admit at first I got my journalistic backup there's no doubt about it I'm not one to be told what to say or when to say it. Uh, that's just what we are through Sleeping Bag. We're all about freedom of speech and doing the best we can to promote the continuation of that. Um, but that wasn't what you were doing. You weren't restricting my f freedom of speech in any way. And, you know, I re-examined it later on, and I came to this conclusion that, you know what, Jay is a guy that knows what he wants in the direction of this band. Um, so I think what you're doing with the Schmaltz has a real uh, set directive and I think you've got specific goals. I wouldn't doubt it that 
you've got some sort of grandmaster plan in the background that you're slowly checking off uh, different parts of the progress as it goes along. So, I guess what I'm wondering, Jay, did I get any of that right? Where exactly are you taking this project, and how are you going to get there? Sorry about that, man. It was merely a suggestion because I love bands like Clutch and Black Sabbath. Uh, but it certainly wasn't a challenge to your uh, journalistic skills. To answer your question, I can assure you that there's no Grandmaster plan in place. Uh, but I do want Schmaltz to evolve over time. And I do want to build a healthy listener fan base for, for the act. Because eventually, um, I do want to tour and play live with Schmaltz. Um, but apart from that, I do, I do want people to listen and support more independent artists. S -B -S. Okay, let's take a break from the UK and let's uh, send us all the way across the water once again. Let's end up in Black Rock, Australia, where you can find Rhett May. Man, that's awesome. We always have an amazing time talking to the Aussies. Incredible music comes from there. I'm stoked for this now, dude. The new EP he's just released is called Insatiable, and the lead single is called Cocktails and Cannabis. Do these things go together? Hells yes. I mean, I'd assume if you're writing about it, it's happening there. But over here, I can tell you for fact, these things go together. We're living in B.C. Anyway, let's put that new single, Cocktails and Cannabis, on and uh, let's talk about our new friend from Down Under, shall we? Okay, so first of all, I see a name like Rhett May and I instantly start thinking rock. But I don't really know what to expect yet. We listen to everything and we talk to everyone, man. I never know what to expect anymore. Should we even include that? Then I see the name of the new single, Cocktails and Cannabis. And I think to myself, well, maybe Rhett May is going to rap for us. Nah, son, this is rock with a melodic twist to it. Insatiable as an EP is kind of like a Beatles meets uh, Steely Dan meets Neil Young kind of thing, if that makes any sense. That doesn't make enough sense. I should go into that more. Okay, so musically, Rhett can do a lot with that rock, and especially his guitar. Also through the music, you can hear that jazzy drum element bringing in the keys sometimes. Uh, these are the kinds of things that lead to that Steely Dan kind of feel. You can hear that on the title track, Insatiable, quite easily. I'm a big fan of this guy's intricate ability to conquer that guitar. He takes a departure quickly on the EP and departs into almost a reggae rock kind of track. It's a pop rock deal going on with a song called Ape Peter. And this is a smartly written track, once again. As the third track on the EP, good songwriting is no shock at this point coming from that name. But if you listen closely, you'll hear my Neil Young comparison come through. Rhett walks the fine line between himself and Neil's voice almost all the way through this track, and then is accompanied by some absolutely astoundingly beautiful female harmonies. Uh, just work perfectly in this track. Definitely one of those perfect pop pieces that you can see could easily translate to different styles of music and become a hit in any kind of genre. All of this leads to one of my standout tracks on the EP called Jenny. Now that's not to say that the single Cocktails and Cannabis isn't worth talking about. Of course it is. But this particular track, Jenny, really helps support my Beatles time. That's some classic style songwriting right there, and if you think this beard doesn't have a soft spot for the classics, then think again. In fact, I use a tremendous amount of beard oil just to ensure that it's nice and soft in at least a few spaces. Sorry, where was I? Right, Insatiable, uh, the new EP from Rhett May. It's been out for two months now, and you can find it available on iTunes. We'll have links to that at the end of the show. But I'm not done yet. I mentioned guitar solos, right? Good, because I wanted to talk about it twice to drive the point home. Rhett can light up a guitar at any time he chooses. He has an incredibly authentic and genuine feel and touch on that instrument, and it really shines through in the recording. His solos are extremely adaptive, tight, well played, 
is well placed within the space of each song. That guitar playing might very well be his greatest strength and asset. It absolutely stands out every time I listen. Now, the lead single, Cocktails and Cannabis. Mm. How do I say that? Ah, got it. Here's the thing. I know a hit song when I hear one. And Cocktails and Cannabis certainly has all of the elements that you're looking for in production in that great big hook of the song. But, I'm sorry, Rhett, there's a but here. I don't know if it's necessarily bad. It just sounds too easy for Rhett. And I mean this in the best possible way. I truly do. Here's an example. Well, I don't like this band, but Nickelback. I can still acknowledge that they write a killer pop song. It's completely well written. Hate to say it, but they nail it every time. It's a formula, and they figured it out. Gross. But forget I mentioned those guys. It's not what I'm comparing it to. What I mean to say is that of all the tracks on this particular EP, Insatiable, you definitely chose uh, wisely. This song, Cocktails and Cannabis, is clearly the most accessible song on that EP and has the broadest appeal to a mass audience. But like I said, it does sound easy for him. Rhett sounds like he could make uh, 15 cocktails and cannabis songs before breakfast, uh, whereas a track like Jenny might come along once, maybe twice in a musical career. I mentioned I'm a big fan of that Jenny track in here somewhere before already, right? Otherwise that reference is kind of wasted. Yeah, there it is. Nailed it. I've listened to more of what Rhett May has done in the past uh, through his page at MySpace. You can get uh, great access to his back catalog and hear a ton of music there from him. And it's always shown a great ability in being able to produce a quality uh, and well-written song. And it was great to get that comparison because you can hear that growth in the songwriting and in the production on his new EP, Insatiable, and just how far that Rat May has come along. But I also have to admit, for fans of bands like uh, The Arcade Fire or artists like David Bowie, check out some of this back catalog by Rat. There's some interesting stuff in there that has a completely unique sound, unlike uh, what you will hear on Insatiable and gives a uh, kind of more rounded feel to the overall catalog and what the skills of Brett May truly are. Uh, there's some unique stuff in there and I definitely recommend checking that out. Australia might be miles and miles away but music and the internet make us all neighbors. So no excuse, go and check out Rhett May and his new EP Insatiable. But for now let's get back to the interview with Jay from Schmaltz on SBS Live this week. completely about being online because uh, obviously we are the same in that respect we are musician promoter we're the same however again reading into the bio and the descriptions of what's going on over there in Schmaltzland I read this thing that uh, you actually don't believe in playing live what okay I mean, that's going to blow a lot of people's minds. Um, but let's take a step back for a second. Because I think I should say something here. I think, you know, myself, obviously, I am a promoter. I, I record audio and I record video. I make videos. I edit things. Uh, but really, I, I promote. I'm a promoter. So I should probably say something in defense uh, for all the promoters out there. And... Uh, uh, um, right. Uh, you see, promotion is an art form. It's like what really? Uh, he's so totally right. I mean, promoters are bloodsuckers. Uh, um, I know what I can say. 
I can say I agree with you. For the most part, from what I can see out there in promotion land, when it comes to management or anything to do with the industry, it is not acceptable in terms of how the artist is dealt with, treated, respected, uh, in terms of respecting their creative control and the content that they're making. Um, there's all kinds of things out there that I can't stand about it. And I think, Jay, I think you're on the same page as myself there. I think that you recognize that the industry is broken and that the internet uh, can really unite us all through this universal language and be a strong entity out there to promote change. There could be some real leaders out there, but we're not coming back to the industry. So how does it change? Where does it go from here? What is the next step? What's the future of music? Don't get me wrong man, I do believe in playing live. Uh, however, I feel that you need to have a decent fan following or at least the punters paying at the door have come to see your act or some very good live music uh, you if you get like a great support slot with a band of a similar genre that's brilliant then I think you should play live um, and very very importantly you work with promoters who work very hard to promote the nights that they host um, don't get me wrong, it's not a war against promoters, man. It's it's more getting the promoters to do what they're supposed to do. I think bands have already a lot on their plates at the moment. They make music, they're catering to the current crop of fans, they're working on mixing, mastering, you know, stuff like that. And if they <clears throat> and if they start working on actually promoting their you know, promoting gigs, then what's the point of a promoter you you just kind of you just kind of team up with other bands and put on great nights yourself and we've done this previously I've done this personally with my old band so so yeah so it's not that I don't believe in playing live I do I think it's very important but if you don't have a fan base then I think bands should concentrate on getting a fan base and they can do so by creating videos online uh, just like uh, what I intend to do with Schmaltz. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit more confident about this one. This is the official video by Schmaltz for Evil Eye on SBS Live this week.
John Robb and Steve from Blackout Lights came by SBS for an absolute grunge rock throwdown. It was wicked to talk to these guys. They're very down to earth uh, and they make great music. They covered a Nirvana song for us. It was just a wicked time overall. Absolutely mind blowing performance. Wicked amount of music. They played a ton. I love it. So that's how we're going to go out on the show, the first show of year two on SBS Live this week. We're going to give you a preview of Blackout Lights. I'd like to say thank you once again to Jay Sarau of Schmaltz for being here with us, to rapper Octane for being here through video, and of course to Rhett May for letting us get to know him a lot better. We'll be back soon with part two of Schmaltz on SBS Live this week. We're here in year two, and we're not going away. So we'll see you then. S B S Okay, so the only thing I can tell you for sure is in my coffee spot. Oh, oh dude, no, it's cool. <laughs> Weird shit is, is that going back to lazy promoters, yeah. they ask you for those numbers. Yeah. And they don't look at the pages of all these people. Right. Well, they just no. want to know no. what the hard fact is. Yeah. You've got 3,000 likes yeah. or whatever it is. But if it's getting it might not mean anything. Exactly. Right? Exactly. A lot of those right. online contests that they do, right, where they get likes. I think there was the Squamish Festival one they had in the summer where you got people to listen to your song and they vote on it, right? Most okay, yeah. votes actually got to play at the Squamish Festival, right. which is pretty cool. Like Queens of the Stone Age is playing this year, yeah. so <laughs> would have been a great gig. Right. Good. Oh, I don't know if it's good yet. I mean, we got to make sure my full beard gets in the shot. Yeah, yeah. 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 What about yeah. position it properly, right? My new beard. beard. Here we go. Not Here quite as go. long as your beard, sir, but... Uh, well, you know, it's all good. You know, how long have you been working on yours? This is like three weeks? Three weeks, that's very acceptable for three weeks. Ago, I yeah. mean, yeah, this thing's been going for some time, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. I saw some pictures on there where you had no beard. Yeah, the, yeah those days are coming again. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared because you're a fresh yeah. shave. Yeah. What do you mean, though? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 once a year? Well, it's like a Christmas present to my wife, to be oh, completely sorry. honest. I <laughs> give her back her husband for yeah, at least right. one day <laughs> comes back. I, I would I wear my influences on my sleeve for sure, you know, going back to I mean Soundgarden would definitely be uh, you know, one of the earlier bands that I listened to, but um I picked you know well. yeah, now <laughs> these days, you know, I mean so there's so much out there that I think a lot of us could would say that, you know, very diverse musical influences. For me it's all about the experience and if yeah. we could have, you know, our piece in rock yeah. and roll history, we'd love that, that's all. It's not too yeah. much to oh, ask. Not too much to yeah. ask. Yeah. Dying.